are live right now after William Eklund wins it in overtime. 3-2 win for the Sharks in the their first rookie game. So we're going to kind of chat about this. We're going to kind of less formal than a normal podcast. Just want to hang out for a little bit with you guys and kind of take your questions to talk about the game. So, yeah, let's get into it here. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young. Um, contributor for the fit San Jose Hockey Now. If you guys have been listening for a while, you guys know who I am. But, oh my gosh, William Eklund. Whoa. Let's start there. William Eklund, the best player on the ice. On the ice where Mason McTavish, in all of his glory this year, the favorite to win the Calder Trophy, William Eklund did the damn thing tonight. Two goals and assist, um, an absolute bar down butte in on the power play, and then in overtime, just took it, took Owens Elwiger's soul, just spun it right out of him, and then power move to the net and crashes it in, pokes it in, and that's something that we didn't see from Eklund last year, and that was that that seven pounds of muscle coming in to play right there. And you can just see it. You see the chemistry with him and Bordalo. I know it's a rookie game. We're going to try not to get super, super excited. But at the same time, how can you not be excited about William Eklund and, and what he did tonight and just showing why he... He is so special. Why he is that guy? He's going to be that guy for the Sharks, man. Woo! So we're gonna get to some of the other guys who looked in good and stuff. But like I again, I'm just so pumped from seeing Eklund tonight, and just he took the summer, stuck to it, worked on his craft, got stronger, and you could see it tonight. Winning battles, winning board, you know, uh, battles along the boards. And again, just when you needed to put the shoulder down and punch it to the net, spins out Owen Zellwinger and then just goes and does the thing. So um, I'm, yeah, I know it's one game. and But but I mean, at the same time, it's not like the Ducks have a, you know, the Ducks have a really good prospect pool. And, you know, these they've got good players. Mason McTavish is literally the odds-on favorite to win the Calder. And McTavish are good tonight, too. But William Eklund was the best player on the ice tonight and uh, among the skaters. I don't know how you can say he wasn't. You know, he was all over the ice. Gr- ferocious forecheck, almost had a, a partial breakaway. You know, scored two goals. Had his set up uh, Bortolo for the first goal, like... I don't know how you can watch not watch that game and say, yeah, William Eklund, <laughs> William Eklund doesn't deserve to be along in the NHL. Easily the best player on the ice tonight. Uh, yeah, it was it was great. So um, we'll get back to to some more Eklund. Um, let me know who you guys thought was was good or who you guys thought was was impressed with tonight. But um, I want to actually go to uh, Kinejev, uh, Artemi Kinejev, the defenseman, and. Man, you can just see the confidence in his game and that that step he's taken where, you know, just the way both offensive and defensively, just the way he plays the puck, you know, has some great, uh, great back checks on the defense. There was a couple kind of breakaways, was able to make some nice, nice moves back there to break up some stuff. But you see that he's got working on his shot. You can just see the confidence growing with him and. Yeah, I, I think he he has solidified himself. You know, last year, of course, first year in pros, and it's it's going to take some time. But you can already see that jump that's going to be coming with him, and um, I expect him to have a huge year with Akuda and kind of really help solidify that that defense that struggled last year. And that's part of the growing with, with these young players. But oh man, sorry, I'm still excited about it. <laughs> William Eklund. Uh, yeah, let, let's, but yeah, I think Kanishev had 
an awesome night tonight and you know was was quarterbacking the power play two unit um but really you saw both sides of the ice for him playing smart defensively and also helping to contribute to the offense and the cooter are going to need him to do that and you know if, for him to kind of make that jump into the sharks and be that two-way defenseman I think another year in the CUDA, and then we can kind of see what, what's going on with Kinesia. So um, I guess Ryan Merkley, we'll, we'll talk about Merkley. Um, again, the same thing that we've seen with Merkley, where you have those highs and, you know, that pass to 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 Eklund to set up his goal where, you know, he just he kind of draws in uh, the the forward and then makes finds Eklund in a really soft spot where Eklund's able to go bar down. Um, you know, passes like that. And, you know, even with the, the some of the creativity where – he kind of fought with the puck for a second, then all of a sudden he's in the, the free area of the ice and kind of setting stuff up there. You see that with him, but again, sometimes you, you want to see just a little bit more and a little bit more of that consistency with him. So um, it's something he's still going to have to work on, on going, especially as they head into training camp and stuff. But when Merkley, when he pulls off that play, it's it's a special play when, when he can do it. So, um, yeah, sorry, I'm still just in... William Eklund, Spinny Rama. Oh, mercy. Oh, mercy. Uh, <laughs> as always twirling, twirling, twirling towards freedom. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments who you guys who you guys were impressed with. We can talk about that. Um, you know, Ozzy, I think was I was really impressed with him tonight, too. You know, way he was kind of flying around the ice. And that's that's Ozzy's game, is is he's gonna be really speedy, he's gonna be that kind of get under the other the other team's skin type of, of guy. And, you know, he did he did that tonight. And he was in the middle of the fray. He was, you know, any time there was a, you know, after the whistle, there was, he was in the middle of it. And, you know, we saw some of, a little bit of the offensive skills, you know, I, I think with him, that's going to come. But right now being a, a high energy third forward, third line forward guy. Um, and then once he kind of figures out his offense a little bit on the next level here, and, you know, I think maybe getting his confidence too, um, you know, especially after what was a really down year for him last year, getting that confidence back. I think we're going to, we'll see Ozzy. And I, I think the coaching staff and the front office, they're going to love Ozzy, especially once he starts finding the back of the net here soon. So, um, really impressed with Ozzy's game last night or tonight. Um, Alfred said he was uh, really impressed with Furlong. Yeah, he had a really nice stop. Uh, McTavish was basically all alone in front of the net, and he uh, he did a good job, you know, keeping McTavish from scoring. So, you know, I, again, Furlong didn't play as much as, as some of the other defensemen. When when he was out there, he was very smart defensively, um, is, which is something you you want to see for him, especially playing in the queue where it's a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say beer league, but there's not as much of a focus on defense there. It's, it's more about the offense and, and scoring over there. So I want to, you know, seeing him make those smart defensive plays, um, really, really impressed with, with Furlong tonight. So, um, but again, you know, we want to – Want to kind of see, especially when he goes back to the queue, that he can kind of take that with him. So, uh, Broden Smith, thoughts on Robbins? I liked Robbins' game tonight. I know he had the one failed clear that led to the goal for the Ducks, but I mean, every guy, everybody's going to have those bad plays. I mean, nobody's going to play a perfect game. But I liked Robbins' game tonight as well. You know, he was active on the the penalty kill. You know, was playing on on the power play as well, kind of centering that that second line. I really like that line. Uh, with Goosh and Robbins and Co. That could be a line that we actually see on the Barracuda. I'd be really happy to see that line on the Barracuda as well. But, you know, really, really liked Robbins' game tonight. Um, you know, I think kind of the same thing with Ozzy, where once they kind of, once he gets his confidence in the A um, and is able to kind of get going there and then starts finding the back of the net, you're going to see him really explode type of, of situation. So, um yeah, I, I was really impressed with Robin's game tonight as well. I think, uh, like I said, I think for him, just getting some more of these game type of games under his belt. But we're going to see Robin's kind of be this. I think he's going to be a, a, a pretty special player at, at some point. So, but let him let him get there. So, Anya Bucci, yeah, <laughs> woo man, that hit he had. Uh, 
you know, in the first period where he, he took out, he murdered a dude there. So again, I think he's going to be a very defensive, defensive type of, of, um, of guy, but especially in the AHL where you need kind of those guys who aren't afraid to mix it up and mess around. I thought, you know, he, he looked good tonight. You know, they used him especially on, on the penalty kill as well. And, and um, but I, I was very impressed with Anyabuchi's game as well, you know, especially for a guy who's having to earn it the hard way, right? Had to win a, a get an AHL training, you know, contract out of training camp last year, did that, had, you know, had a really, a pretty solid year last year. Again, not a guy who's going to fill up the score sheet, but you need these kind of guys in your system type of things who, you know, is, is well, well on his way and, you know, got that second AHL contract. And I think we're going to see, you know, I don't think he's ever going to be like a huge point getter guy, but I think he's he's definitely going to be a fan favorite, especially especially in the uh, in the new Texas U Arena. But yeah, he he looks good tonight too. Uh, let's see who else do you guys want to talk about. Uh, um, Chichek, yeah, Nick Chichek. Um, yeah, Chichek looked good too. Um, you know, I, I think. Another one of those steady hand defensemen who's going to make the right play um, a lot of the time. You know, most of the time he's going to make the right play. And I think we'll see his offense grow a little bit more, hopefully this game, especially with some better talent just on the ice. But again, Chichek, my dark horse um, to to make the Sharks out of training camp. You never know, but it, it's it definitely, it's you know. There's a small path there, but I would, I think Chichek, I mean, you can put it down, I think Chichek plays NHL games this year. So um, he's going to be this year's Jake Middleton, where he kind of comes out of nowhere and, you know, and, and plays a lot of, uh, plays more NHL games than you would expect. So, yeah. Um, again, if you guys are new to the stream, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Um, we do, if you're, you know, kind of just finding Locked On Sharks, five episodes a week, Monday through Friday, and then, um, on the weekends, we'll probably be doing these type of kind of live streams, just uh, all vibes, no analysis, just on some of the games, especially where right now where, you know, this is we've we've waited a long time to be able to have something fun to talk about. And yeah, tonight was really fun. Um, you know, I think Bordolo Bordolo is going to make it really tough for this. I think really, really tough for this coaching staff um, to have him start in the, the Barracuda. You see those that patience and that vision with him. And, you know, he, he's got a shot. It's going to have to work on some stuff, you know, uh, kind of had a kind of a lapse in a defensive zone, but even on the same shift made up for it in, in that same where he kind of left it open, but then he made a nice play um, behind the goal to, to stop a, a duck shot. But yeah, I think he's a. Uh, I think Bordolo is going to really make it tough for the for the uh, the Cuda to, or for the Sharks uh, to, to send him to the Cuda. I still think right now, just because it's a numbers game, where he's probably going to start in the Barracuda, but he's not going to be down there very long, to be honest. So, um, yeah, let's see. Merck is so frustrating. Yeah, I, I again, you see those moments where it's just like this is amazing. Why can't you do this all the time? And he had, like the same time that's, Oh my gosh, what are you doing? Type of thing. So I think for Merkley having that right partner, I like, I love the Merck Chichek partnership tonight where Chichek is going to be that guiding defensive hand. He's going to be able to cover up for, for Merkley if he makes those mistakes and kind of makes those risky plays. Um, I think that's the big thing is finding the right partner for Merkley, you know, We've seen that in the Sharks organization for a bajillion years now. Finding the right partner for Brent Burns, finding the right partner for Eric Carlson. You know these guys. You got to You have to find that guy who can kind of be the, um, you know, the unsung hero and make those those defensive plays, especially when they're out there trying to do stuff that makes them special. And you know, sometimes it doesn't work. That happens, but when it does work, you know, there's only a certain amount of guys in the world who can make those type of plays. So. Yeah, same thing with, with Merkley. We're gonna see. We're gonna see this from him. I think for his entire career is those plays of like, what are you doing, dude? But if he can help to limit those a little bit, I think we will. We'll, we'll hopefully get to see more of a NHL caliber Merkley and get to see him. So, um, what else? Rasco was sneaky good. Yeah, Rasco's good. Rasco's gonna be kind of that 
not as skilled version as Ozzy that, um, you know, third or fourth line energy guy. I'm going to drive the other team nuts. I'm going to chip in a little bit of offense here and there. I think Ozzy's Ozzy has way more offensive skill, you know, but I think Raska, you know, he's going to be that fan favorite type of guy where people love watching him kind of do Raska things. Um, but yeah, I liked him as well tonight. You know, I thought he he had a very productive game without even getting on the score sheet. He had a very productive game and, you know, doing what he's supposed to. He's one of those guys who knows exactly their role. He's not, you're not going to ask Tim to do stuff that he isn't, but if he is fits in his role, he understands his role. Dakota says, hi, if you're new to the stream, Dakota, the real co-host of the show, um, you know, Rask is going to be one of those guys who really, you know, kind of, fills that role of being that kind of pesk. And it's going to be interesting to see, especially if he gets to go to Europe, especially, you know, cause he's, he's from Czech, uh, Czechia. If the sharks kind of let him make the team out of camp and go to go, you know, have with a chance to potentially play in front of his, uh, front of his family and his, his home, you know, his home country. But, um, again, perfectly, perfectly cromulent, uh, third or fourth line guy. So, um what else do we got here uh good Eklund boards man yeah strauss man um i don't think i've talked about strauss man yet but strauss man i think he is well 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 on to uh oops uh well 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 on his way to winning that barracuda goalie um position you know being that, that number one goalie I think he's a dude. I think he's going to be a nhl goalie at some point i don't maybe not this year maybe not next year but in the future, he's going to be a really solid backup, um, like a really high end backup and a guy who could probably play 30 to 40 games for you and, and be really solid. So um, if you get that for free, you can't complain. So um, yeah, let's see about Brandon Co. Co had a couple sloppy plays, you know, especially there was a couple lazy passes and stuff like that from him. Um, I'm, I'm not worried about Co though. I think, I think he's going to be fine. I think once, we get to the AHL games, he's going to hit the ground running. So yeah. Uh, my three stars of the game. That's a good question. Um, for number star, number three, uh, we'll go Bortolo. Um, you know, Bortolo did Bortolo things, won a lot of draws, of course, had that beautiful snipe. Uh, second star, I'm going to go Strauss man. Um, the two goals, I think, that was a lot of his team didn't get the puck cleared, um, you know, and some like that. So whatever. Um, but yeah, I thought Strauss man, like I was just talking about, I, th I think he's, you know, he, ever since he's got to San Jose, I think he's going to be just a dude. So um, yeah, he's been good. And number one, sorry, of course it has to be uh, William Eklund. If you missed the beginning of the show, um, spinnies all around just spinning spinning towards freedom you know but like I, I said at the beginning of the show he you saw that extra muscle and he spent the entire off season kind of getting his body ready um you know getting ready to play an nhl caliber game and that goal at the end william Eklund wasn't making that that goal wasn't scoring that goal last year he you know able to combine the athleticism and the skill for the spinorama and then to kind of drive home and, you know, lower the shoulder for kind of the power forward move to uh, score there. It was great to see him also just the beautiful snipe that bar down um, and get, get that bad boy score that nice goal. I'm sure for him getting that goal now and kind of hopefully helping to ease the pressure for him, you know, especially after having such a long drought without scoring. I know he scored in the preseason last year, but um you know, just to help maybe as he gets in the training camp, it gets into to preseason games here to kind of get that offense going. So uh, what else? Gushin, um, he had a really good shot um, at the at the beginning. Look kind of small. I don't know. I mean, small guys. I know I just talked about William Eklund in his size, but it's not like William Eklund's a big dude. I think it's playing within your role, and I think Gushin will be fine. You know, it's, again, with a lot of these guys, it's, you have to remember they, they dominated their teams, you know, in the OHL and the WHL and et cetera, et cetera. So it's going to take some time to get used to playing against men and pros and stuff like that. And I, I'm not worried about Goosh. And I think he's, he's, he's going to have that shot and that, that shot is NHL caliber right now. So once he kind of uh, gets things figured out, he's going to be totally fine. So uh, is Bortolo. Okay. Don't know right now. Uh, I'm checking the old, uh, 
Twitter's right now. I mean, he, I know he kind of got a little shooken up there at the end, but um, let's see what old Shing has. Good old Shing. Uh, Acklin Biggs. Yeah, nothing on Bortolo. So we'll see, um, you know, how they are notoriously, you know, uh, hockey, they're notoriously open and honest about their injury. So I'm sure we will know at some point. So look like he got a little shooken up there. Um, We'll see if he plays tomorrow night or if maybe they rest him, but I, I think he'll be fine. So, um, friend of the show, Hal, teal helmets and pants look better than I thought they would. Yeah, I was um, not a fan. I mean, not a fan of the, of the uh, when they first came out and stuff. Um, they look better, I think, in, in in action than just seeing you know pictures of them. So it's still weird. I still weird that they went with like the mix mismatch of old school and new school uh with it but yeah it's probably going to be once you see the action and stuff they probably look good i really want to see the away ones i really like the the way jersey more um i'm trying to talk mrs young into letting me get that uh eckland away jersey but we're you know here's hoping so um if the best way if you Want to help me get that William Eklund away jersey? Make sure you guys are subscribing to the podcast. Um, every subscription counts. It helps out. Um, that way I can be like, look, Pumpkin, I bought this with my own monies. I don't need your monies. Actually, I do need her monies. Um, yes. So um, that'll do it for me tonight. Uh, again, recap. William Eklund, he good. Um, Borolo, as advertised. Strauss, man, I think has really kind of you know, put himself in a position to, to win that Barracuda starting goalie job. Uh, really impressed with uh, Kanijev or Kanijev um, or Timmy Kanijev. I thought he was, did a great job both ends of the ice tonight, offensively and defensively. You know, I think we're going to have a big year from him. Uh, I didn't talk about Hadika, but I think same thing, maybe not as, not as high as, as, as I thought um, Kanijev was tonight, but um, Hadika is well on his way to being a, a pretty solid defenseman as well. Yeah, so that'll be it. Um, well, maybe I might do this again tomorrow night. If not, um, we'll have a, a full episode for you on Monday. Have a full breakdown of the weekend's action of Rookie Games. Uh, thank you guys for coming to hang out with me tonight. Um, that'll do it for tonight. Uh, again, make sure if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe on the old YouTube. Um, you can also, of course, follow the show. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can do that over at locked on sharks um twitter i'm gonna try to do more clips again tonight if you were following along twitter had a bunch of uh a bunch of the clips i'm gonna try to do more clips this year fingers crossed you know i'm a busy guy trying to do this all by myself but gonna try to do more clips um again facebook instagram also going to be posting our work there as well and yeah um, follow me on twitter at my fry hole make sure you guys subscribe um if you want to just listen youtube or apple odyssey you got Spotify. You guys know where to find podcasts. And then, yeah, that'll be it. Bye, friends.